Are you good? Is this thing on? This <laughs> it's that's okay. It's a light. That's a light. You're a light. Oh, thank you. I'm the light of Christ to the world. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Q&A time. Today, we have a guest from the St. Bernadette world of the South Town. 35-minute drive. Yeah. To get here. This is Jake. Y'all might know me from Zombie Tag Night, from being, I'm pretty sure, the most uh, repeated guest on the show besides staff members and former staff members. Father Paul, what was that? What was the seminarian's name? Joe. Sem Sem Jojo. Yeah. Besides the two of them, me. It's Jake. I'm talent. He's back. What are we doing today, Nicole? Jake, we have our Q and A with the middle schoolers. So welcome to middle school shenanigans. Yes. So I do this thing where children in middle school write questions in this box. Got questions about the church? Any other? Something random? Yeah. Great, great handwriting too. Thanks. And um, let me tell you, they ask really interesting random questions. And so this is for our middle schoolers. It's in our Beauty and the Chaos series, which is specifically made for middle schoolers because middle school is absolutely chaotic. How do you handle curly hair? Here's the thing about being a man. You just do it. I don't know. <laughs> Women put on like 40 different shower treatments and shampoos and stuff. If you're a man, you're lucky for many reasons, but also because of, sorry, also because of uh, your hair, easier, easier to take care of. Yeah. I don't have any advice, honestly. How do you handle it? How do I handle curly Chop hair? Chop off half of it? Well, that was part of it. Uh, my curly hair has been quite a journey, and you were correct. For females, it is quite different. There is shampoo, well, specific shampoo, not really anymore, but there's, like, curl cream that I use and, like, how I, like, dry and plop my hair and stuff like that. Yeah, but at the end of the day, if you didn't do that, would it still be curly? Would it still look fine? No. Do you need to do all that? I do. Do you really, though? my hair gets bananas. Because that's kind of my theory is y'all overdo it. Oh. Not, wait, let me, let me, wait. let me <laughs> <refresh>. Wait, <laughs> You don't, if, do you need to put that much work into it or would it still look fine? Well, okay, all right. I'm not as intense as some girls. But there is, like, a way that you need to take care of curly hair that's different than just straight hair. My it's kind of like ethnic hair is the same way. Like, you have to take care of it differently. Yeah. So drink water. Yes, water. Actually, that's very true. Drink water. Yeah, that's what I meant. I'm sure there's people with, like, much more specific steps and, like, what to do. Turns out we're not experts, Ooh, we're not. but we're doing our best. Adam. Oh my gosh. Oh! Oh, <laughs> check it out. Hey, Wait, watch this. What are we doing? We got, uh, Answering we got questions. Good. kind of questions? Oh, Ooh, Adam's oh, fresh oh, out of the shower. It smells good. <laughs> smell cam? You guys got smell cam up here yet? Not yet. Smell uh, it's an add on. It's one of the plugins for Chrome. You just gotta hit the bell. Hit the bell. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Are priests named after saints or disciples? Well, yeah. You're gonna sometimes. have to ask their mom. Right, that's what I said. They're named <laughs> after. They're named with their parents' names. Right? Unless but like Paul. they're in order. Oh, all right. Well, that's true. Do they change their name? So, like Franciscans and Dominicans, and if they're so, if they're not a diocesan priest, if they're in an order, mm -hmm. uh, some of them I think do change their names. God bless you. I love middle schoolers. You guys are awesome. Keep it up. Have you ever thought about being a priest? Um, yeah. Sure have. Wasn't for me. Wasn't for you? Looked into it. No. Nah. No. Nah. That's cool. No. Nah. God bless them, though. Support our priests. Mm-hmm. I thought about religious life for a little bit, but again, I was like, mm, nah. Not for Nicole. Okay, actually, this is funny. For the next one. Am I too young to be called to a vocation? No. No! Tell them. So, okay... The thing is, like, you can know from a young age what you're called to. That means, like, you have a really amazing relationship with God. Because, like, the key component to discernment is having a relationship and, like, talking to God. And listening. And listening. Like, you have, you can't just be like, oh, I don't know what's happening. But you never talk to God about it. And so if you already in middle school have discerned what your vocation is, that means you have a really spectacular faith life. And that's awesome. And it doesn't mean that you're like locked and loaded into that but if you think you already know your vocation that's really powerful and that's okay 
That's beautiful. I mean, there are guys who begin the journey to priesthood at 18. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Father Luke, he was 26 when he was ordained. Yeah. I don't know where he is now, but great guy. I mean, Father Paul talks about all the time, like, he knew he wanted to be a priest since he was, like, a child. And some guys don't, some guys live a whole life and then discover they want to be a priest. Mm-hmm. You never know, but, you know, never too young. If you're praying and you're listening, that's a huge first step. That's a big step. So good job. And if you, the writer, are considering it, tell somebody. Yeah. Tell somebody you trust. Tell a priest. Or find a religious sister and ask them. What's the hypostatic union? Great question, Nicole. <laughs> you don't Cut do... to me asking Nicole what that means an hour ago. That's true. Okay, so the hypostatic union is um, a very theological term that explains how Jesus is 100% man and 100% God. Jesus walking the earth proves that he is man. Jesus' miracles prove that he's divine. And neither of them take away their the other one. So it's, it's not like... Exist. Yeah. It's not like it's like 50% human, 50% man. No, he's fully God and fully man. And Nicole fully did a great job answering that question. Thanks, Jake. Next, please. Can you play Christmas music, please? <laughs> Can you be lying if you are trying to prove someone did a miracle? Can you be lying? Yeah, you could be lying. I actually love the process of, of proving miracles and sainthood. Mm-hmm. You gotta prove the miracles, there's a scientific process, there's a Vatican led process. So, yeah, you could lie about it, I suppose, but. You know, the church is really good at catching people yeah, that lie. The process for finding that out. Um, and that's why sometimes sometimes it takes 100 years for somebody to be beatified, sometimes it takes six. Who knows, mm-hmm. you know? So, yeah, you could be lying, but anything. Oh boy, there's glitter <laughs> all over me now. Uh, you could be lying, yeah, but. Um, you would probably be caught, and anybody who is beatified and has those miracles proved on their behalf certainly was not lying. How do you know if God is calling you to something? You'll listen. How do you know if anybody's calling you to something? You'll listen. Usually, if somebody's call, or if you're being called to something, it's usually, not true in every case, you're not just going to have something appear in front of you screaming, do this or do that. Usually not the case, but if you're listening and you're feeling a tugging in a certain direction or a pulling in a certain direction or something keeps appearing in your thoughts or in your when you're in prayer or you keep having, having something come to the forefront of your head, that's listening. And that's how you know you're being told something. Also, peace. Um, oft- like that. Oftentimes, when you're praying and like discerning something, you're feeling called to something, um, once you make that decision, it brings you peace. And that's a sign of God being like, yeah, you did it. So, good job. the last one. The last melon. The last is that melon. Is a good one? It is a good one. Now, <laughs> you told us, they're talking about me, not Jake. Uh, you told us that the church is often seen as a bunch of old ladies praying a rosary. Why is that? Let's start there. It was in a conversation... And on the, because we were talking about kind of like the reputation of the Catholic Church in the world and how oftentimes people think, well, it's, it's just a bunch of old ladies in a church praying a rosary. Which is true. Uh, yeah. There's lots of old ladies praying rosaries, but it's not just that. I mean, I know that because I have dozens and dozens of Catholic friends and people that I know who are my age and younger and a little bit older. There's two of them right here. Um, so, I mean, if you're looking for that, then you can find that. Um, and also, Catholic old ladies praying the rosary is powerful. They're probably praying for you, too. Yeah. Listener. So true. Because also, too, like, the rosary is super powerful. But that's a whole other thing. But there is a second part to this question. Let me read it. Okay. What can we do to bring youth back into the church? Which is funny, because... The youth probably wrote this. Yeah, probably. So yeah. what you can do, my friend, is go to church. Yeah. I think, too, like, you guys as middle schoolers 
high school, whatever, the young people watching this, um, you have a lot of power and influence more than you think you do. Um, like Jake was saying, you going to church influence, influences people your age to be like, wow, it's not just old people. Like, just I'm just saying. You going to youth group, you participating in these things and inviting people your age shows that the youth are involved in the church and it is alive. It's not just old people. I mean, hello, we're youth ministers and like our job is to work with youth <laughs> in the Catholic Church. I'm not elderly. I'm not old. I might be, but I'll it's okay. Rosary, but I'm not old. <laughs> But yeah, it's pray rosary too. Don't worry about it. And it is kind of like it's a snowball effect. If one person gets their friends going and then they get their friends going, next thing you know, the old ladies are outnumbered. Yeah, right. right. And the old ladies love seeing you. Uh, you'll make their day. Mm -hmm. You'll make their week. Their like year. Let's be real. What does my shirt say? Pool club. Okay. Some Everyone people, welcome. Some people think it says poo club. No, it says pool. That's an L. I know what it says. I know what it says. <laughs> it's an L. I know. But people think it's this poop, poo club. <laughs> Grow up. Well, everyone poops, just so you know. Even the Queen of England. And Santa Claus. Thanks for coming. Thank you for having me, Nicole. Thank you for giving me the Santa hat to take home. Thank you, the viewers, for the questions. The great questions. Um, we hope that we helped you understand what it means to be a priest. And a Catholic. And, and Christmas music. And... And dancing. Yeah. And praying rosaries. Bye! too tall I'm out of frame oh my God. but I said don't move it oh yay okay. okay I hope this you can they can hear this jeepers, jeepers? what do you scooby-doo